There's no trade post on this map, is there? So there's a Conqueror player. We can definitely do a bit of a build here, I think. A little bit of a build guide for Byzantine lads. So, so. I, I haven't been playing winery, but I haven't really been utilizing the Hippodrome either. But I like the Hippodrome for just kind of forcing your opponent to make a barracks and some spearmen early on. But let's... um. So we're against Order of the Dragon. That's going to be interesting, because I think they're quite good against Byzantine in general. Just because I don't really have much to take down their units in H2. But we'll see. E the Hippodrome definitely has, like, some merit to it, for sure. Like, even the possibility... I do like the idea, if you're playing against some civs, that you want to slow down a bit. That you can just make a couple horsemen early on. Because you don't have to bank the stable. It's kind of like French with knights. Like, it forces you to automatically uh, be the person that reacts to your opponent, which... Yeah, if you think about it, that's why... French, in a lot of ways, was quite uh, solid against a lot of civs, because it automatically demanded that you kind of put your economy uh, last. So I have been very much about placing my cisterns a, a little specifically. So I'll go through this in a little bit of detail. Initially, I was just putting my cistern, like, right next to my TC. And the cisterns work in a way that you have to make them a certain distance apart. You can't stack them. So if I put one here, if I imagine my TC as like, it is my main base, obviously. But if I put one here, it means that around here I can't put any more. So... If I put one like here, it means I can put one there, 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 technically. So I can I can almost put up four cisterns in a very, very safe area around my TC without actually having to worry. You know what I mean? So I think that's like a really nice spot to put myself in. So the initial system layout, and that isn't something that I'm saying is optimal for all time and end time, but just the way that we've been playing it so far in this kind of like economic fashion. Because, yeah, if I put like one, let's say here, one here-ish, one here-ish, and then I can spread one to here, that's potentially all five systems without me spreading it all over the map, which I think is fantastic. It's, it's, it's good to have an idea about how you want to do things initially. What's we'll saving against again? Order of the Dragon, of course. I'll tell you what, we'll use these guys to make the Hippodrome. Just a couple. I like to spread out my workers on the trees. Just so we chop them down all pretty close to the same time. Now, this build relies on getting a very, very fast second TC. It, it really does. So with four workers, you gather a little bit more than you need for constant work production. So maybe at some point, I'll start thinking about moving one of these guys over here. Or moving an extra guy onto here and then rallying to my Hippodrome. So this covers the stone, covers all these wood chopping areas here as well early on. So that 5% boost, oh, it's coming in quite handy. Coming in quite handy. So we'll actually do it like this, I reckon. So I wait for the food to drop off there on that villi. We'll have a little look at what's going on. So it looks like it's going to be a 2TC play for our opponent as well. Cool. Nothing too scary, Mary, at the moment. 
And the reason I liked three on each of these wood patches, I suppose you could say. Trees. Maybe that's a bit easier. It takes just a few journeys to go and sort that out. So now this hippodrome's getting kind of close to completion here. Rallied all our workers, so we've got enough wood for our second TC. Really good. You know what, we'll do it like that. And by the time this finishes, we're going to be pretty close to having the stone. Because remember, completing this gives you 32 stone as well. Because it's a big building. So boom, 32 stone. That stone from here, we're getting it all going. Everything's starting to kind of line up here. And where should I put my next TC? That's my next question. I'll probably do it over here. Ish. Next to some berries. So this is a very nicely timed second TC here. Close to about 450. Depends where you can put your resources in general. Like if your stone is close, you can kind of mix and match on how you want to do it. But I think this was about as good as we can do it in this scenario. And I'm going to leave a few guys on the stone. Just a few. Nothing too crazy. So when that second TC finishes up, we also get another 32 stone. And as I talked about uh, cistern placement, we'll make it pretty close. We certainly shall, so... Let's see. Okay, nice chunk of workers going. And let's put a cistern somewhere over here. I reckon. Let's use this guy to connect when we can. Need literally like one more stone. There we are. More sheep for the sheep god. So, things to aim for now. Going to be getting another another cistern. Just a few guys on the stone. Again, you can use more if you wish. Certainly can. And I do have to be a little bit aware about what my opponents may be up to. So maybe I can use this this system here as my like production HQ the military. So start uh, getting a barracks up just nice and defensively. And we'll put another system maybe over here. I reckon. So once we hit that stone requirement and we know where his expansion is here. He's got a spearman. So how close can we make it? Ah, oh, pretty close actually. We'll plonk it like that first. And then we'll move them onto... I'll put them over there, I reckon. Alright. Lots and lots and lots of wood is what we have. And here I think we'll actually go up to just a couple of barracks. I like to actually have it so I can put a lot of space around these cisterns because eventually the best thing you can turn them into is orchards. Right. So right now, getting the boosted uh, wheelbarrow upgrade here. We'll just make a nice little safety wall here, I reckon. And I can start thinking about getting the mercenary camp over here. And one thing I do really like about Byzantine... It's the fact that you can kind of mix and manage how you want your layout. So right now, this is going to be kind of my HQ of production here. Very close to my TC. I'll put a lot of my 
houses back here, just out of the way. So my cisterns can act as future, like, farm areas, if you will. You know what? How big is that? If we put that on research, is it big enough for this? Or probably not, actually, but the last one test. Not quite. Okay, I'm going to get, um, let's get a lumber camp so we can get the upgrade on it. In fact, in fact, because we're getting boosted over here for these villies, we'll put it a bit closer. And now we can be a little bit of a bully on the playground, you know, just a smidge. Nothing too crazy. Oof. Feeling when he just chunked my bros. So it's a very early castle. Very early castle. So you can get archers. We're already getting jabbies, which are awesome. You know what? Let's go plonk that there. So, lots of relics in the middle. Good for us to note. So we'll definitely pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. And this can be kind of our research HQ. And we'll upgrade the... Ooh. Got a bit worried there. Wasn't anything too scary. So one thing I've really noticed about this sieve, they are gold hungry when they get going. Giga gold hungry when they get going. So it's definitely a good idea to just kind of be mindful of what your sieve needs. So we're upgrading this pretty fast because we're boosting it and we're on three cisterns. And I'll tell you what, we'll just kind of go and uh, go to the closest resource here that's still good for us. And again, we know that there's a relic up there. We scouted pretty decently early on. And he snagged this relic in the middle, so we'll start working our way over there as well. And as we're teching up here, I've got a lot of triumph points available for when we do hit uh, age 3 and maybe get cataphracts on the go. And actually, we've got enough to uh, tech up, team. Okay, okay, we just missed that, lad. And we'll put this Golden Horn Tower in a nice, safe location. As to not get lefuked. Wait, are these crossbowmen? Very interesting. I mean, we definitely won't do too bad against those. With our army. That's good to know. We've got this guy over here. And we are getting a good amount of gold as well, eh? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Tell you what. Split off some boys. Soon I'll put this on research initially. Because we're going to be getting uh, quite a few upgraded units. So it's going to be a quick upgrade on the uh, veteran uh, jabs. Who we'll gets? We'll get a few things actually. I think we can just go for a quick snipe on this lad. I think so. Quick snipe, Reno. Bing a bong. Bing a bong. And we'll, you know, we'll put a relic jobber there. Start getting our own relics. Okay, upgrades are done. Now we can get back to producing units. I'll tell you what, let's put you there, you there. So at this point, I'm going to start making some cataphracts as well. They're just good. This, this upgrade here boosts our cataphracts, armor by one. Move speed of our Spearman by 15 and attack speed of Rangian Guard. So all our unique units get a buff. Absolutely fantastic. And that gold that we talked about that we needed a lot of, we're doing pretty well on that count too. Um, 
So again, within regards to the cisterns, I can put one here. It can maybe serve as another uh, HQ for production. And it's all pretty close and easy to do within regards to our production, right? Like, we haven't had to go too far or be like, oh no, where can I put it? It's all been very nicely slotted in. Um, so here, just a couple more barracks. I'm obviously using way too many uh, workers there for it, but we are just getting going. We're just getting going. I do have some houses on the way for that uh, very temporary supply block, can I tell you what? This is a nice food source over here, so let's just confirm it, get some walls going. And we are grabbing relics here. We definitely are. We'll work. I'm just getting the upgrades together because these upgrade real damn fast because we're on a good amount of systems here, aren't we? We really are. So he finally picked up this relic here. We saw it disappear off the map. And I am very curious about what he's going to be going for. So right now, I think some of the next stuff that I want... I'm thinking... Soon we're going to start thinking about the orchard switch. Is what I think. So our golden horn tower here is just producing units. Right now, do I need to do anything? I absolutely could start bear hugging my opponent a little bit, I reckon. But we'll also start thinking about where we're going to put uh, some farms. So we can definitely kind of get over in this area, I reckon. All boosted, obviously, and not badly placed. So that, uh... Get the final cistern over here. It's getting boosted as well. So now we're on a good chunk of cisterns and getting all these upgrades. I'll add some Varangian guards to the mix as well, because we've got so many... Limitane here, and cataphracts that we can actually tank pretty hardcore, I'd say. That we don't need to be too worried about that. And you know what? This could be a new nice spot as well for wood, wood gathering. Because we are eventually going to go into very, very, very heavy uh, farming when the time comes. But right now, this is like as good as your eco can feel with Byzantine, I would say, to some degree. So what's, what's our comp here? Oh, we can see him a little bit. But I'm not that worried about what he has. Now, there are a lot of lands connect, actually, so maybe I should be. Maybe I should be worried. We'll see how this goes. This will be interesting. Now, my upgrades are absolutely maxed out here. So these cataphracts, seven armor each, but remember, all his units are... They're chunky boys. We also have Triumph available for this fight because we haven't used it yet. It's one advantage from that very early Hippodrome. And... Let's go, team. It's go time. We're going. We've activated Shield Wall. We're activating the Berserking as well. Now, our Limitane. They're going to be sick tanks against all this. So all those land snacks that he had, they're actually dead. And you know, my army still stood up pretty nicely here, isn't it? We'll drop our shields because we're on the chase now. We'll start converting to lots of orchards. Just grabbing eight at a time if you can. Sometimes it can be a little bit fiddly, but you do what you can. So obviously not an all-in because our eco is insane. We'll delete that there. Oof. And yeah, we are uh, we're mowing him over, team. Absolutely mowing him over. Our javelins counter all of his homies, the crossbowmen. 
And now we can start thinking about getting in the middle as well. And we have a lot of stone available. A lot of stone available. We can definitely put uh, another farm set here. This one's maybe our safest one. I'm kind of looking where I can put more farms while still being next to sister and so definitely do it here now. And because our sieve is so stocky when it comes to um, having great towers at age 3. By the way, it feels like there's some pit mines missing here. <laughs> sort of. And now our food eco is on the go as well. I might delete that and put it somewhere else, you know. I think I shall put it like... Uh, let's put one over here for now. Okay, I'm working on the foreign engineering company here. Really good. Really good to have. So this will boost everything. It will boost absolutely everything. And we've got so much... Uh, gold and stone to burn through. It's actually our wood that's the most problematic right now. It's kind of interesting. So work count really high. I will whip out some units while we're teching up. And when this foreign engineering company finishes, I want to look at this armor on these camel riders, because this is one of the big things that we've uh, come to realize. So it's plus two, plus two right now. It goes from plus two to plus seven melee. And then to plus four. That's huge. That's actually huge. So that is a billion percent worth getting. A billion percent. And I'll tell you what. Need more gold? Maybe we'll just kind of make a cistern over here, right? Just connect it to this one. Feels kind of nice. And he is fighting against these mango towers that we have, which I will tell you, team, that can be problematic for him. All right, so. We have a damn good chunk of money to burn through here. A damn good chunk. Our camels are also significantly faster because we finished... Wait, are they faster? They don't seem like they're faster. They are meant to be. But I don't think they did get faster, actually. So maybe that's... Uh... But we'll get... Some nice upgrades going, and again, they take from 1 minute and a half to 30 seconds. So pretty damn solid. Pretty damn solid. We can get uh, Grenadiers here. We can get the Nasty Bees. We'll get this ferocious speed upgrade here. And obviously, given that we can fold the world itself. We'll just get everything we can. Also, one thing that's worth noting, we've been getting uh, javelin throws most of the game. When you get uh, the foreign engineering company, they go from uh, plus two damage to plus five. So that's uh, that's a big deal as well. Really big deal. Stone scope, thank you, thank you. And again, just getting all the upgrades we can. 17 seconds a pop. And also get this. That'll help our grenadiers out, I'd imagine. Or imagine. So much stone. We'll get tight farms. I forgot about that. I could have even put this on a research facility or a production facility. 
You know, initially you can make the monks for twice as fast. You can get tithe barns twice as fast, a bit more than twice as fast. But our army is starting to look absolutely mental, isn't it? So I'm gonna I'm gonna pump out a bunch more. Uh... Actually, how much health do the cataphracts have? Let's see. It's pretty damn good. Oh, I haven't really experimented with trample. Uh, to be super honest, let's get that. So the Hippodrome's kind of getting boosted by the research and the production here. And I think our opponent's in a lot of trouble. We'll just go and plonk down some uh, keeps. So yeah, we just uh, let's go. Let's go see how he does. Let's go see how he does, eh? Because we've got nearly all the upgrades here. We'll get this one as well. 21 seconds for level 3 horticulture. Very, very solid. And yeah, our income's amazing. Absolutely is. So. We, team, are going to charge right on him here. They take a lot of uh, the extra damage and they put all these guys as vulnerable. So, I mean... And this is an order of the dragon army. Like this is this is a beastly army team. It really is. That's, a, that's crossbowmen in the back line. Now these nasty bees. The limited nade, by the way, are like some of the best tanks in the game. Like, I, I almost want to show you guys um, some limited aid tanking. So this this one here, he's going to take a full volley here. And he's still alive from 15 crossbows. By himself with the shield wall active ability here. Which is actually mental when you think about it. Actually mental. Uh, we'll get the uh, some nice upgrades on the go. Oh, wait, they only have 10 uh, range armor now, huh? Like... <laughs> Javelin throws with a 13 plus 6 damage. GG. Not bad, team. Not bad. Not bad. So, this was a little bit of our Byzantine guide here. Just going through it, step by step. I think this is definitely a nice way to approach the game for Byzantine. Just because when I th when I think about everything that you get, so the Golden Horn Tower that we produced and we place it very nicely and safely, this will just produce a set of units very, very frequently. The contract I like to get most of the time is the one that produces your javelins, your camel riders and your grenadiers. I think it's the silk contract. I think Javelin Throwers are one of the best units you can make. Just because if you are going Limitane, which is a very spearman base comp early on, their weakness is Archers, but still, they don't hard counter them as hard as you'd think. Because when you activate the Shield Wall for 50% range damage taken, most Archers will deal... It's like, what is it, 6, six damage early on and then a bonus to Light. So let's say they're dealing 10 damage a pop. You actually cut it by half immediately with this, so it'll be five. And then for if you get one armor, it's then four. So again, these elite limit and A are actually really, really solid. Really solid uh, spearmen. They're 10 resources more expensive, but it's very, very good. So being able to say like, hey, I've got the best spearmen in the game. And then you've got the best counter to what counters your spearman. I think that's just a nice, solid way to open up. The horseman early on, or the hippodrome early on, I didn't even necessarily use it this game because I saw they had an early barracks, but that's what we force out of your opponent going for hippodrome. I think the winery's a little bit of a trap. I didn't feel that I was struggling for oil this game. Now, granted, I do have a very good eco, and it's all getting super boosted, but... I have been able to more than produce mercs, if I wish, along with like nester bees and stuff, which is great. And also, like, if your berry's at the front, it's like, oh, do I put my grand winery on it? And it's like, if you don't, it feels like a waste, and it's then only a late game situation thing. 
kind of tricky. Um, secondly, secondly, so we went over the limit in A, the contract, getting the cisterns. You can start your second TC by about 450, 445, depending on like how the eco is around your base, which is great. And I think that's just a solid, solid situation to put yourself in. Because I do like a lot of these early system builds. I like them. But when you haven't really got that many workers to boost anyway, putting a mining camp on the stone and then just trying to boost your like 15 workers by 15% for a pretty massive a pretty massive uh, investment in the stone and the cisterns initially and all, all, also the building time. Yeah, I definitely prefer having the earlier second TC and then getting the cisterns. It just, it flows very natural. Um, one, one big thing again, like here you can kind of see, I talked about it earlier, that TC in the middle, then you've got like one cistern over here, one cistern here, one cistern here, one cistern here. So my initial kind of like, oh, yeah, the cistern situation it's all pretty close. You didn't need to spread it all over the map. And this is when you don't put it like directly next to your TC. You kind of have like a, a square with the TC kind of idea in the middle. Um, I have been pushed with this build by civs such as Jaune Dark, where they push extremely hardcore off one base. And I've most of the time been able to hold somewhat still with doing this, which is amazing. Um, like I made the double barracks early on here, which is what I have done against the more aggressive civs. Now, we did this and we had like a good bunch of 20 units versus zero early on, but it was totally fine. Against Zushi, these guys are really good against Zushi. So, if you think about Zugnu, limit an A, you will take the, the, the Zugnu deal how much damage? Four damage, five with the upgrade, you half that. So let's say the four damage, you half it. So they're doing two damage per shot. And then you've got one range armor, aka one damage per shot. These guys basically turn into men at arms against Zugnu, which is amazing. Um, so I've really been utilizing their strength. And when they get the cast, when you get castle, that's when you really pop off with this because your eco is already solid. You can get the cataphracts out, which don't require any extra upgrades. So it's just like, hey, you just make them. But the big thing, you're limiting A, you get Varangian Guard, you already have the barracks going. You know, your, your javelin throws get the boost, you get camel riders, meaning that cavalry isn't as good against you, even more so. But you don't want to be making cav against them, do you? Regardless. So it's like, all right, what do I make against them? Do I make range units? Well, they don't deal that much damage. Do I make infantry? I mean, you could, but then say if it does become a men at arm game, your army is still not bad against that. All you'd do is throw down an extra couple of archery ranges and just go crossbowmen, which you're already giga boosting. So yeah, it's just it's just a fun fun build to play. I really recommend you guys try it out. Alrighty. Also, let's have a look at the eco here. So order the dragon. We just absolutely stomped him when it came to eco, and he went for a two TC build this game. You know, absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Righty. Be right back, boys and girls. Just going to go. Can you do a build order guide on this one? I, I just kind of did it. <laughs> Be right back. 